Hi and welcome to this uh, brief little tutorial, quite straightforward tutorial and uh, it was requested by a commenter on a previous video about determining lift angle of a watch that you don't know or you cannot find the lift angle data for. It's very straightforward, there are in fact other videos on YouTube on how to do this but you know it's, it's a useful thing to know so extra ones certainly don't go amiss. And the method that I use now, well, the methods are the same. Uh, however, the, what I use now to determine the correct lift angle is, um, is this, which is my cell phone, or rather this is part of my cell phone. And because it has a slow motion camera feature, which is absolutely fantastic. What I used to do prior to a suitable slow motion alternative was to use a, uh, a sharpie or a permanent marker of some description so I will actually do that to demonstrate what I mean you will need some isopropyl alcohol and some uh, tissue to clean up afterwards because this is just for purely this is purely for determining the lift angle of an unknown caliber so you've worked on a watch you've just reassembled it it's all back in, in one piece to a stage where it's running like this is. And you begin by releasing the power on the watch so that the balance wheel is at rest, as you can see there. And it will naturally rest in its central position, which means the impulse jewel should be between directly between the banking pins in a line like this. A uh, handy little tip for those that don't know, if you've got a balance wheel with two arms, like this one here, that you can see, the impulse jewel will always be directly in between uh, two of them. So that, that will be where your pallet fork is. And you can see there that the pallet fork pivot is indeed smack bang in between the two of them. So if you have a balance arm with on, a balance with only two arms, the impulse jewel should be directly in between the both of them because this is logically the most even point to be the middle, as it were. And to determine the that you're getting a swing of 180 degrees, which is a good um, a good rate to actually calculate your uh, your lift angle from you take your sharpie and very very carefully and i cannot stress enough the very very carefully you very very carefully holding your balance wheel stationary now forgive me if i go off camera here because this is this is a little bit tricky you mark a point that will be visible on that note the part that's going to be visible as this swings is currently hidden. So this is where it's very slightly tricky and this is where you really do have to be careful. So we'll just bring that around again to the 180 degree point. This wheel is actually a little easier because it has the balance adjusting screws on. And as I say, the key word here is careful. This is the 180 degree point. I'm just holding that with the pegwood. And then what, um, what I do is go ahead and make a mark very carefully with a pen that works. So excuse me a moment. Now, please forgive me. I don't have another fine nibbed one to hand. So this is going to get a little bit ugly. Uh, but you take a marker and you make a mark. Let me just get my eyeglass and get in close. Oops, without doing that. Okay, back in a second. Make a nice visible mark that you can see there. This will clean up with isopropyl alcohol and a little bit of tissue. So don't worry about doing any damage. As I said, just be very, very careful as you move the balance. So, I just make sure that dries nicely and we'll let that do its thing and settle down to a stop. 
The next thing to do is to, we'll just allow that to stop so you can see what's what here. So you can see we've got a mark there bang opposite. Now obviously that's almost invisible currently, but this will become much more visible when it's swinging because it will be over here because that's where the swing will go. So that's 180 degrees. What we need to do now is we apply a screwdriver or you can use the winding crown of course if the keyless works are in. And I'm going to add one full wind of the, um, the ratchet wheel. So that's half and one. So you can see that's one full wind of the ratchet wheel and this will start the balance spinning. Now I do this for all watches after a service specifically because I use this as my test bed as it were. If a watch has been well serviced and everything is clean and the train is running as it should be and the escapement is working, one full wind of your barrel should give you about 180 degrees. Now what you're looking for here is the black mark that we made on the balance stopping and returning in roughly the right place. Now you can see we're kind of there but what I'm going to do is just let the power off of this and we'll wind that gradually so we know where we're at. As soon as sufficient power is applied, the balance should begin to swing under its own strength. Whoops, let's give that a little jiggle. There we go. And it's probably very hard to see on camera, especially when this has been framed at a specific sort of frames per second. But what you're waiting for, what you're looking for, is that black mark to line up and meet as the balance swings both ways. Once you've established this, you've established that you are getting 180 degrees of amplitude. And as I say, ideally, this should happen within the first full wind of the barrel. That's, that's how you know you've got a good, smooth running train and that power is getting through adequately. Subsequent winds will then pick up the amplitude considerably, but we should have there, let me just have a quick check of this. So, You're getting close with an eyeglass and check and you're looking for it to be about right you're looking for that mark to meet up about right as I say it may be tricky to tell but this is where the beauty of the slow motion camera feature of a cell phone really comes into its own it allows you to film what you're looking at at in this case 240 frames per second and then you can actually physically check and verify that you are beating at 180 degrees. That's about 180 degrees. It doesn't have to be 100% exact because the simple fact of the matter is you are not going to get 100% exact reading uh, on your time grapher. But this will be close enough to get you in the ballpark. For example, if you were doing this on a Seiko with a lift angle of 54.5 like the 6138 that I'm looking at recently, you might get um, your time graph are telling you that it's around 53, 54, 55. It's close enough to get you in the ballpark to know that you're getting a near enough reading. Now, ideally, you want to do this winding and adding the power while it's sat on your time grapher so that you're not disturbing it and causing it to swing more or less. What you then do when you've got a 180 degree swing is you place this onto, um, you switch on your time grapher rather, 
and we're just going to switch to that now and I'll show you the next step. So we're here at the time grapher. I'm just going to turn the ticking off so that um, it doesn't get ridiculous. And you can see that we're currently getting a reading. Ignore the beat error, ignore the trace on the screen. I mean, obviously, unless it's a really bad trace, in which case you need to identify why. But ignore the, the gain, the loss and what have you. At this moment in time, the only thing that we're interested in is getting the lift angle approximately right. It defaults to 52 on the Weishi time graphers, as you can see. We're getting an amplitude reading of 193. Now we know that the amplitude is actually about 180. So what you do is stop the reading, go into the menu, select the lift angle, and because it's telling us that it's higher, we know we need to decrease that lift angle. So we'll take it down to 50 degrees and restart it. And we're getting closer. Okay, so it's 187. So we'll stop that again back into the menu and we'll drop that to 48 degrees. And you get a little bit of a feel as you go along and do this. And eventually you will get a reading that's somewhere near. Now that's telling me 174. I know the amplitude's a little bit more than that. If anything, it's a little bit more than 180. So back into there and we'll increase that to 49. And off we go again. And this should be telling us that we've got an amplitude of around 180. Now that's near enough for me, 179 degrees. I will double check the amplitude of this specific caliber because I can, because it's a well-known make, it's an FHF. And I'm guessing that the actual recorded amplitude will probably be somewhere around 50. But as I said, this is not absolutely perfect, but it will get you in the ballpark rather than having to guess. This is, this is a means of getting a good estimated uh, lift angle from your watch. And because there will be slight variations as it's reading, you need to maybe have a double check as you're taking the readings and making the adjustments to see if it's dropped or increased significantly at any point. So there we go, a quick, simple little tutorial and on calculating an unknown lift angle if you have a watch that you cannot find the lift angle for. And just to complete this, what I'm going to do just here to show you how relatively easy it is to clean up the mark. I'm going to take a piece of tissue I will say at this point, uh, use a piece of closely bound tissue, one that's not particularly fibrous, if you possibly can. And uh, you can do this with a cotton bud, but I am not a fan of cotton buds being anywhere near a watch movement because they shed fibers worse than a long haired dog or cat or other creature and um, accordingly should not be anywhere near a watch movement. So I'm bringing the mark back around to a place where I can access it and carefully holding that. And then I have a little squeeze bottle down here of isopropyl alcohol. This gets used for all manner of watch related things and also for my model making. And then I'm just going to put a few drops onto this little spiral of tissue that I've created. And then all you do is wipe this over and you can see that that effortlessly soaks up. You don't have to pressure, literally just wiping this over. That effort, effort that that effortlessly soaks up the, um, the ink of these markers. So as you can see there, there is no, no damage caused 
and this is purely for visual identification. If you have the slow motion camera, you don't have to do this. As I say, I tend not to bother now, um, unless for some reason I don't have my phone with me, if it's say if it's on charge while I'm uh, reassembling a watch. So I hope you found this useful and um, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.